If you're an American shopping for unlimited data and voice, odds are good you've looked at Sprint. But an unlimited plan is only as good as the smartphone that gives you access to it. So, is HTC's newest flagship a good match for the Now network? Let's find out. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is our video review of the HTC One on Sprint. We've talked about the hardware on the HTC One before in our review of the European version and our comparison videos. Follow us on social media and subscribe here on YouTube so you don't miss those. The One features stunning build quality, with an all-aluminum construction broken up only by strategically placed injected polycarbonate that helps break up the monotony of the back cover. Around front, the precision machined holes for the boom sound speakers and the beveled edge around the display contribute further to the One's distinctive look. That distinctiveness translates to the feel in hand as well, a feel you can't really get at the retail store when the phone is tethered to a post. The 9.3mm thick center section butts up nicely against your palm, while the 4mm thick edges fool your fingers into thinking the one is thinner than it actually is. The weight is perfect at 143 grams, neither too heavy nor too light, and the aluminum body is often cool to the touch. We're a little worried about how well the metal will hold up to wear and tear. That chamfered edge dents pretty easily, but the deluxe look and feel is well worth it if you're into hardware aesthetics. It's all held together by the 1080p SLCD3 display, which at 4.7 inches kicks out an absurdly high 468 pixels per inch. The pixel density, the excellent colors, deep blacks, and outstanding side-on visibility make this the best screen available on Sprint right now. The 5-inch SAMOLED screen on the forthcoming Galaxy S4 will give it a run for its money, but to our eye, the differences are slight enough that this shouldn't be your deciding factor if you're considering both phones. The software running on that display is Sense 5, the new HTC skin, running atop Android 4.1.2 Jellybean. Our demo unit was a pre-production model with a very few minor bugs, but HTC and Sprint informed us those would be ironed out in the release devices. Sense 5 changes a lot about the stock Android look and feel, but unlike previous versions of Sense, it adds to the experience rather than detracting from it. Colors are muted and used judiciously, classy grays and blacks dominate the flat, low-chrome widgets, and the screen real estate is used intelligently for the most part. The care that HTC took in designing its software can easily be seen in apps like the Dialer or the Messaging app, the latter of which is almost magazine-like in its clean, easy-to-read layout. You have to get used to scrolling, which is less continuous and more page-by-page, page, and there are touches that you'll either love or love to hate, like Blinkfeed. The social media and news scroller is a lot like Flipboard, and while it's a pretty experience, it's also slower to load and tougher to read than just using the stock Twitter or Facebook apps. And its aggressive permanent positioning on the leftmost home screen is a little overbearing. We understand why HTC did it, and Blinkfeed is a pretty cool feature, but it's not the grand slam the rest of the experience is. At least, not yet. Overall, the HTC One's software build is beautiful, useful, and responsive thanks in no small part to the 2 gigs of RAM and that speedy Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 CPU. Every corner of the UI is fluid and speedy. It's not until you get over to the network side that things start to slow down a little bit. We tested the HTC One on Sprint's 3G and 4G LTE networks in and around the Greater Boston area over a period of seven days. Speeds over 3G CDMA were pretty dismal while speeds over LTE were about average for Boston-area 4G connections. While outdoor coverage kept pace with AT&T and Verizon, indoor coverage didn't. Sprint's version of the HTC One is only equipped for LTE at 1900 MHz, which makes sense because right now the only spectrum block on which Sprint has deployed LTE is 1900. That higher frequency means indoor coverage suffers, and the One frequently waffles back and forth between 3G and 4G inside. That might have contributed to a bit of battery drain on our unit, though the embedded 2300 mAh LiPo did generally get us through more than a full day of moderate use. Sprint has announced plans to deploy LTE on its 800 MHz holdings next year, but the One in its current form won't be able to take advantage of that. So if you're buying for the long term, you'll have to be okay with the One being a little harder of hearing in the reception department than smartphones of 2014 are likely to be. 
Fortunately, its 802.11 AC compatibility means it screams on Wi-Fi networks using that technology. Getting back to more conventional testing, there's some good news. The One is a very solid performer in the phone call department. Callers said we sounded very clear compared to other phones, and even in noisy environments, we could still hold a conversation with no problem, though callers did say they could make out more background noise when we rolled down the window in a speeding car, for example. Similarly, in loudspeaker mode, callers said they could tell we were on a speakerphone, but that the effect wasn't bad. On our end, the earpiece delivered rich, nuanced, and plenty loud sound, and that effect only grew more pronounced when switching over to speakerphone mode. Whether it's phone calls, YouTube or Netflix watching, or streaming music on Spotify, the combination of Beats Audio, front-firing speakers, and the amplifier-driven boom sound technology gives the HTC One almost unreal audio performance. If you're planning on using your unlimited data plan to stream media, the HTC One offers the best audio experience available from a Sprint smartphone. There's candy for the eyes here, too, in the One's ultra-pixel camera. We've talked extensively about the One's oversized pixels and how its shooter compares to other devices, so we won't retread our steps here. In brief, the HTC One delivers photos that you'll be happy to share on social media and via MMS. And given the right lighting, it's actually capable of some really beautiful photos, at least in terms of smartphone photography. Its colors are a little warm, and the 4 megapixel resolution means you can't zoom in on the photos too far after the fact, but it does incredibly well in low-light scenarios, keeping pace with the king of dim room photography, the Lumia 920. That, combined with good video performance, cool innovations like Zoe, and an immersive gallery make the One's camera a solid performer worthy of praise, despite our reservations about its lower resolution. Sprint's HTC One isn't perfect. Its lack of a removable battery and no expandable memory or a 64GB option means some users might feel a little constrained. Also, Sprint's 4G build-out is still in its early stages, so many users will be stuck on 3G as they wait for Big Yellow to catch up. But those network realities will affect any Sprint customers, and the One is certainly not the first phone in history to lack hardware customization options. The bottom line is this. If you're shopping for an Android smartphone on Sprint, you're not going to find a device with more beautiful hardware or software design. The forthcoming Galaxy S4 will definitely give the One a run for its money in terms of specs, but it's not bringing all that much new to the table compared to the earlier Galaxy S3. You'll have to wait for our full review on the Galaxy S4 for more. But if you're in the market right now for a premium Android experience on one of the nation's last remaining unlimited carriers, or you're an existing Sprint customer curious about what the luxury Evo line has evolved into, the HTC One is a perfect fit. We give it an 8.8 .8 out of 10. For more on the Sprint HTC One, including our written impressions and benchmark scores and a whole lot more, see our full review at pocketnow.com and check out our comparison videos here on YouTube. Leave us a like if you enjoyed the video, leave us a comment if you have something to say, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.